Alex here with a legal nuts and bolts video on special order after judgment. I've gotten this question before, but it was mainly from people in Nevada, and I've started to get the question a little bit from people outside of the state of Nevada. Now that I know it's kind of a popular term that different jurisdictions use, I decided to cover it. It's a very technical term, and it typically applies to, well, as far as I know, it only really applies to appellate law. So with that, I'll go into it. There are, at least in Nevada, rules of appellate procedure, and one of those rules discusses when you can appeal a particular determination, judgment, order, or whatever it happens to be called. There are also other areas of the law that explain when a person can appeal. Sometimes it's in the statutes, um, and I'm not sure if there's really any kind of example in the case law. The case law mainly elaborates on existing rules and statutes. It doesn't really create the right to appeal anywhere that I've seen in the past anyway. So. From what I've seen in Nevada, at least, most of where you get your authority on whether or not you can appeal is in the rules of appellate procedure. And one of those rules happens to refer to special orders after judgment. Basically, the rule says that, you know, among all these other things that a person can appeal, one other thing that you can appeal is a special order after judgment. So the question becomes, what is that? Because special order is a pretty vague couple of words. There is quite a bit of case law on it, and it's important to know what it is if you are in any kind of case, but especially in a child custody case, because as I've mentioned in previous videos, most of the litigation in a high-conflict child custody case is not actually done before the trial. Most of it occurs after the trial, during what they call the post-judgment phase. And typically, when it comes to high-conflict child custody cases, that involves a bunch of motions to modify. Motions to modify child support, motions to modify uh, child custody, whether it's legal or physical, things along those lines. So, in those particular cases, it's especially important to know what a special order after judgment is, because most of what you're doing in that type of situation is after judgment. Um, I think I've mentioned in a few videos, so I can't remember the name, what a final judgment is, it's typically the judgment or the decree that is entered after the trial in the case, or if you have settled the case, it is the stipulated judgment or decree. As I have mentioned in previous videos, most often what occurs in a child custody case is a settlement initially, and that is not any different for high conflict cases. It's quite normal for high conflict parties to settle very early on so they don't actually get a formal discovery process or even a trial. They close the case out by settling, they sign an agreement, and then the, the conflict continues, and then people start filing motions to modify after having settled. It's the same exact thing for somebody who's gone to trial as for somebody who has settled and the court has entered in that particular case a stipulated decree or judgment. And what I'm trying to get into there is that it doesn't really matter which of the two has occurred. The point is that your case is closed, you've gotten your judgment, and everything that's going on now is post-judgment or, as that magical little phrase, special order after judgment implies, after judgment. So the question becomes, and again, I know I'm talking about a lot about um, child custody, high conflict child custody cases, it's one of my topics on this channel, but this is a legal nuts and bolts video because it really applies to any type of case. It's just coincidental that most of my viewers are here for high conflict child custody assistance or help, and that it typically comes up, this, this particular phrase, special order after judgment, typically comes up in those types of cases because so much occurs after judgment. So finally, we reach kind of the meat of the issue, which is what is a special order? Because those are the other two words in that magical four-word phrase. Special order is defined, at least in Nevada, and apparently in other states as well, as an order that alters the rights of the parties insofar as they have been set forth in the actual final judgment. And this gets a little hairy because if a court has entered a judgment after the final judgment because of some post-judgment motion that was filed and resolved, then that kind of gets rolled into that that final judgment terminology. And so anything that would alter the party's rights from any of those judgments or those determinations is going to be a special order that, at least in Nevada and other states that have that particular special order after judgment phrase, is appealable. Um, 
a couple of examples as to things that might seem counterintuitive or confusing. Being held in contempt of court is not considered to be something that affects the rights of the parties. Because even though it is affecting your right as in perhaps you're being fined a certain amount of money for violating an order or you're being thrown in jail and you're losing some of your liberty, it doesn't affect your rights that come from the court's judgments. The, the judgment or the decree describes your rights and we're talking about, at least let's use an example as a high conflict child custody case or a divorce action, we're talking about the way that the debts are supposed to be divided. Um, the amount of the child support, who has custody of the children, stuff like that, stuff that's in that piece of paper. Those are your rights that are set forth in the court's final judgment or decree. Being held in contempt of court is not actually something that's in that, that documentation. It is, you, separately speaking, you as an individual, as a citizen of this country, impacting your rights, but it is not impacting your rights coming from that piece of paper, so it is not appealable, at least not under that particular language, that's, that's that uh, special order after judgment language. This is something that kind of surprises a lot of people because when you read about it and you see rights flowing from the piece of paper or the decree or the judgment, you think, you know, hey, uh, being thrown in jail is affecting my rights, but at least according to the Supreme Court of Nevada, it is not your rights connected to that document, so you cannot appeal, at least not in Nevada. You can still challenge it, you just have to use a different vehicle, and I talk about that in the video uh, Contempt of Court, and I also talk about it in the video Writ Petitions, because a writ petition in Nevada is the other mechanism by which you can get some kind of appellate intervention in your case. Um, other states call them discretionary appeals. It's basically the same thing with a different name. Um, another example of something that's a little counterintuitive in the sense of what I'm talking about in this video is perhaps you are trying to execute on a money judgment. Let's say you have a final order in a case and you are entitled to $8,000 because you won your lawsuit. And now you try to execute on that money, which is to, let's say, uh, have a writ of execution issued and garnish your ex's wages, or perhaps um, maybe you want to question some third party as to where your ex may have some assets hidden, stuff like that. And the judge refuses. The judge denies your motion. Um, it may seem like your rights are being affected, and they are being affected because under the law you do have a right to do those things. But it's not, the judge's refusal to allow that is not actually affecting what is in that actual piece of paper, that judgment, the money. It's interfering with your ability to collect on it, but it's not connected to it. Well, it's connected to it in the way an ordinary person might understand it, but it is not connected to it in the context of the particular law that we're talking about here. And it's all about the law. You can't go in there and say, well, I subjectively feel that this is connected to my rights, therefore I have a right to appeal. It's all about what the Supreme Court, at least in Nevada, it's all about what the Supreme Court of Nevada thinks or, or defines these things as or, or sets forth case law and precedent on it. It's up to them what it, a special order after judgment is, not you. And for whatever reason, uh, a court's refusal to allow you to execute on a judgment is not a special order after judgment, so you can you can challenge it, but it can't be done by appeal. It has to be done by writ petition. Um, that being said, I kind of already talked about this, but I do want to give a few examples of what would constitute a special order after judgment. Um, we could say an order granting a motion to modify child support. Because the child support was set forth in that decree or judgment, and an order granting that actually modifies your rights. It's changing what's in that order. Um, modification of custody, same exact thing. Um, interestingly enough, if a court denies um, a motion, at least, I know for sure this applies to child custody cases. I'm not sure if it applies to any other situations. But if a, child, if a motion to modify a, a final judgment is made in a child custody case and it is based on changed circumstances, is denied. It has to be based on changed circumstances. If that's the case, for whatever reason, it still counts as a special order after judgment. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. I'm sure if I were to reread the case law again, I would find out. But um, that's definitely something to look into if you're in Nevada or even in another state. 
just to make extra sure. I know that this is true in Nevada, but just double check. Um, for whatever reason, a judge's refusal to alter your rights is appealable as a special order after judgment if and only if your request is based on changed circumstances. If it's not, then it's not appealable for whatever reason. And I'm not sure where that could come into play, but I assume it has to do with, um, at least giving one example, I assume it has to do with people who file motions for reconsideration, because motions for reconsideration, as I've mentioned in that video, are not appealable, and they're just asking the court to reconsider what it's already done. They're not based on changed circumstances. Um, I suppose with that being said, I can end this video if it's confusing to people, I'm sorry, but that particular area of law, at least for me, was very confusing, and I have actually tripped over that rock before, where I tried to appeal something that I thought was a special order after judgment, and it actually wasn't, because it didn't alter my rights. Um, it was just me trying to execute on an existing judgment, and so I had to switch gears and use a writ petition instead. So, with that being said, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below, but it's likely that you're going to have to do a tremendous amount of research on your own state to make sure all of this happens to line up for you. And with that being said, I will go ahead and end this video.